Speaking of totally different things, well, not totally, but partially, with, with a few of you that are still in the room. So today, um, what we are going to do in this hour and something is starting to draft a plan for a possible hmm, usability testing. Let me see if I can increase the zoom a little bit. Okay. Uh, so this, this document is linked on the website, so you can already look at it if you want on your computer, and after the, we, we are working this document so the, uh, the results will be visible on the website. So we want to draft <coughs> a simple plan for the usability testing. Since you want, you have to do a usability testing at a certain point, on your application, on your prototype. So we will draft a plan. We are not running visibility testing. We are not analyzing the results of visibility testing today, but we start drafting a plan for it on a specific user interface and a specific application that uh, we will see in a moment, and then we we'll decide the target population, the task, everything, even if some of those things for you are already defined because you define them at the beginning of the project. But before doing that, let me do two things. Do you remember this? Right? Probably not a lot, because I've, I'm receiving some questions that are written here, whose answer are written here. So let me just speak a little bit about the exam again. Hmm? So since, again, I've, I'm receiving some questions, so let's, I will bring this to your attention again uh, since it was the beginning of the semester. So for the exam, you will have the project that you're already doing and finalizing that count up to 20 points onto the exam. Then you have the individual heuristic evaluation that you just have done, probably, and you're ready to submit the joint report for the groups that is up to four points. And then there is the oral discussion that is the day of the exam, right? So in the oral discussion, as a group, up to eight point mandatory, what you're going to do is those three things. So if you look on the uh, exam dates, you will see that there is the entire day blocked for this exam. Clearly, you don't have to stay there since 8 a.m. in the morning up to 8 p.m. in the evening. That is not reasonable. Uh, but according to how many groups we will have enrolled to that specific exam, we will publish some sort of schedule mm, so that, well, there will be some groups in the morning, some groups in the afternoon, also trying to avoid overlaps with other possible exams that you have in the same day. Mm. But we have the entire day to have a room for the entire day. So that's why on the portal you will see that, but you will not need to stay there for the entire day, just a portion of it. Maybe for the presentation of your group and a couple of other groups before, after yours, just in case of missing groups or things that are moving faster than expected. And we will, again, as soon as we, we know how many groups will be enrolled in the exam, we will uh, publish some sort of schedule considering any problem and overlaps that you have. But in that day, you will have a certain amount of time, let's say no more than half an hour, to do these three things. First, a brief introduction to your project. A brief introduction, a few words, a few sentences about your project, what it was about, what you did, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't need to repeat all the process that you did, because you have submitted a report by that moment that we have read and evaluated already. So we, in theory, know everything about your project, because we have read the report. So it's just a brief introduction to say, okay, this is another group and we are speaking about X. And the previous group was speaking about another thing, just to put the attention on what you are going to present, to just provide a little bit of context especially for us moving from one project to another in the oral. And then the main point will be 
the demonstration of your high fidelity prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, so where all the teams of the member will need to speak in this oral discussion, and so present and presenting, and you will demonstrate telling us, let's say, a story about how to use your prototype. Hmm? And this is typically the most critical part, making the demonstration effective, making the presentation clear of the demonstration. But it's a demonstration. You open your high fidelity prototype, and you speak. You show us how it works, what it does, etc. No slides, no everything, just a brief introduction vocally and the demonstration. And then, there will be some questions for you about the report, about the process, about the demonstration, about the project, in any case about the project. Hmm? So that is, that is the, the exam. And after that, you will probably wait for another groups, et cetera. And we typically, after three, four groups, give the mark, the grade for all of them. Uh, so if you can stay in the room, you will listen for them. If you cannot stay, we will put it on Telegram so that you can uh, reflect on it and then decide whether to accept it or not. Mm -hmm. So this is how the exam will work. You will submit everything seven days before each exam date, the one that you want to enroll it. At the exam date, you will have a specific amount of time in, in a specific moment in the day, according to how many people will be in the exam. If there are three groups, we will do it, let's say, in the morning. If there are 20, we will probably need the entire day and we'll uh, allocate people according to also their preferences throughout the day or days uh, if we cannot end in one single day. And during the exam, <coughs> you have to do these three things. Introduction, brief introduction, demonstration, and questions. Again, we will already have read the report. We can have a look at the prototype code if needed because it will be on GitHub in the repository you uh, should have since yesterday or Sunday. You have a new repository that is named as the name of your project, not the name of the group. That is the one for the code. You can put the code there. And so we can have a look at all of these things before the exam. And so we can ask if needed, but you don't need to cover this part. We want you to explain your project, your prototype. Show us why it's useful, what, what needs covers, etc. cetera, from a mostly from a demonstration perspective. Hmm? So demonstrate also that you were able to present what you did and you were able, you understand which are the, the main steps, the weakness, the, the weak, weaknesses and the advantages of your high fidelity prototype and your project overall. So that is what happens in the oral discussion. Okay? Any questions or doubts or anything about this part? No. Okay. So this was a parenthesis again since um, I've received some questions about more or less this thing, so putting it, um, dedicating 10 minutes, video recorded, hopefully will help avoid similar questions. Okay, so drafting a simple plan. So this document has three links here. Let me open it um, for one second. These are uh, two examples of a uh, a usability test plan plus another document. So just to provide you other example of usability test plan in addition to one we are going to do because there is no a single way to do a usability test plan, but there are ingredients that are common among these three, these things clearly. So here there is uh, an example of, this is more a script than not the full plan. So. Uh, here, you see, this is a script uh, with note for the tester. So the first note that the tester has is start recording because 
in this case, the, the test was recorded, video recorded, audio recorded. So this is a note for the tester, not something that the tester say to the participant. We not say start recording, but just a note for themselves to remember to, to the recording. So the script is also useful for keeping track of things to do. And now it's time to start recording. Now, it, now it's time to stop recording. Now it's time to give these documents. Now it's time to set up the environment in this way. It's not something that the tester needs to say, but it's something that the tester needs to do and remember to do. Otherwise, the, the virus test, the virus evaluation will be different one participant from another. And then here there is task one and a reminder for the tester what is task one. And then there is the exact text that the tester will say to the participant, to each participant. I'm going to show you the home page of a website. You can look at it for a few seconds only, and then we'll ask you some questions. Just at this stage, don't click, just look, okay? And then participants look at the page for five, 10 seconds, and stop looking, and questions, and task two, etc., etc., etc. So this is an example of a script in which there are task, questions, reminder, methodology that in a certain moment begins, like, okay, this part is thinking aloud. So it's not only the test, the text, the, the, the sentence that the, the tester say to the to the participants, but also a note for himself that from this moment on, this will be think aloud. Mm -hmm. So a further reminder, reminder for the tester, so that if the person doesn't speak, the tester can solicit mm -hmm. the methodology further. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes on in this way. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's stop recording, so just remember to stop recording. So this is an example of a script with a thank you, with the voucher, with space uh, for, for the observer to take notes and also to remember that there is, in this case, a review, a debriefing session with the other observers that were there to debrief the, the session. So this is an example of a script, hmm? a partial example of a script. It's missing the uh, welcome, uh, we are not here to test you, here, here there are the informed consent to sign up. Uh, maybe there are some questionnaire. So here, maybe before start recording, you can also have give the questionnaire to the participant. Give the first questionnaire to the participant. So all the notes that can be helpful for uh, not keeping things in mind. So this is an example of a script. Uh, the other document is a usability test plan, which includes, I think, the script. This is more of a report that they created for a company that paid for these people to, uh, so for better word books. Uh, so it's this informal report for the company. But it has all, so it has an, in, an index, a table of content. It has a lot of, of, of things that they are not, uh, let's say, that is good for a report for a company, if you are paid for doing that, you want to prove that you have done everything and all the material, you want to submit all the material to the company, etc. it's probably uh, too, too big for what we need here, at least. Mm -hmm. But it has all the ingredients, so okay, the, the executive summary, summary, etc. cetera. Uh, there is the problem, there is the profile of the user, and et cetera, and then there is the participants, so here there are the ingredients, the participants, six college students, uh, plus other two, one as the cap, just in case the problem, and they will be selected using a screener, so they don't pick up people randomly, but they have a screener to select specific students according to their needs, and the screener questions are in Appendix B. And then there is each session that lasts one hour, and they plan to split the session in this way, 10 minutes for welcome at the pre-test questionnaire, consent form, et cetera, 40 minutes for the task scenario, so for the actual test, and then another 10 minutes for post-test questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So they set up in this way. 
welcome pre-test questionnaire, actual test, post-test questionnaire. Then they lay out the role of the team members doing the test, so it will be one that is the moderator slash uh, tester, one that is the logger, hmm? more sort of observator, observer, and then there is another one that is the observer. It's also the technician that all operates with any equipment that they have. In this case, they have control room equipment, eye tracking equipment, so this is probably a usability testing room. Mm, so the one with the, screen, the, the window, the, all the material set in place, etc. So you need also somebody that is looking for these uh, te technical things. Mm, again, and remember that this is a report for a company, so they need to spell out that they did the work, who did the work, because they will need to be paid ultimately. Mm, so they, they have a lot of details here reported. Mm. Uh, then the artifacts that they needed. Okay, before starting a test, I need to have all these things here prepared or on the table. I need a screener. I need a script because I need to read it. I need the questionnaire. I cannot do the test without giving the questionnaire. So I need a, 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 a appropriate number of questionnaires to give to the people. Pre-test, post-task, post-test. They also had a post-task questionnaire in this case. Comments and also, which is the incentive, they will give $25 in cash for each. And then there is scenario, which task, and they also estimated the time to, to complete the, um, the task. Hmm? So they have a specific task, but they also have a scenario hmm, to explain the task uh, in a better way, to better contextualize the task. So instead of saying, uh, um, find a copy of the Way of King throughout his genre, etc. they will say, you have a friend who, thanks to the Game of Thrones series, has developed an interest on fantasy. So they set up the context for this person. Hmm? So since he likes uh, Game of Thrones, this person should check out a new series called the Stormlight Archive that the first book in that series is The Way of Kings. And you want to look up this book and you also want to buy a copy for your father because he reads a lot of fantasy. He's a collector of the book, so we prefer to have an hardcover copy of the book. So this is a scenario that mix inside some task. It's quite long. So it's difficult to remember it by memory. So in this case, probably it will be given uh, to, the, to the test, to the participant in written form so that the participants can always have the task with the scenario in front of him or her and read it in any moment. So not to forget pieces. And this is doable. This is okay if the scenario is long. And so in this case, it's a scenario plus a task all mixed together. And they also say that, okay, this should take five minutes to, to do that. Uh, etc. Hmm? You want to find a book written by your professor, Dr. Carol Barnum. So how do you do that? You search by author and add a copy to, to the purchase hmm? because you are in a book selling website in this case. Etc. So these are the tasks with the scenario. Uh, and then also, which are the methods? So all the things that you have seen during the lecture with Alberto are, are here and you need to have all of this in a plan. Hmm? Again, with, even with less level details, with less text, because again, this was a report for a company. Hmm? So which are the methods, which are the metrics? They have some quantitative and some qualitative metrics. So the quantitative metrics is the time to complete the task or the, and the number of user or participants able to complete each task, the number of attempt, and the responses from the pre-test, post-test, and post-test questionnaire that probably are uh, based on some Likert scale, so are quantitative in that sense. Uh, well, the post-test evaluation is a SUS, is a system usability SUS, so it's, it's absolutely quantitative. And then for the qualitative the information, they also get user comments, probably in some debriefing session, uh, they also look for body language and facial expression, maybe through a tracker, maybe through cameras, maybe analyzing the video recording, etc. 
and user responses to product reaction card, that is something that they give after the text, and also they have the high guide case plots, the heat map, et cetera, so where the people are looking on the screen while doing a task to understand which is the process uh, that the people are following. Hmm? So all of these then, task requirement, hmm? the participant will sit at a desk in an office equipped with the following, computer, monitor, cameras, microphone, everything that you need in that room to make the test happen. Hmm? So this is also working as a checklist for you. Okay, I need to start a task. Do you have the, the, the laptop? Yes. Do you have a monitor? Yes. Do you have the cameras and let's say, the microphone, etc.? Yes. Uh, do you have the tracking working and operating? Yes, I can continue. No, I need to fix it before starting the test. And if you do the task in, in a batch, one after the other, that is something that you, it's easy because you started in the morning and you don't stop, but if you do the test, maybe one today, one next week, and the room is used also by other people, then you will need to be sure every single time that everything is set up properly. Hmm? Um, so this is then was a, a proper usability testing lab, so they have also the control room, um, well, dates, because it was for, for most of our company, uh, references, blah, 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 and personas, we can skip this, and so this is a screener questionnaire, so a questionnaire that um, allow you to understand if you are, um, uh, which kind of, of person you, you want to, you, you are so that you can be enrolled in the test or not. So if you are a student, for instance, you can continue with the test. If you are retired or a homemaker, you cannot be involved in the test because the target population was student. So they probably add these open to many, many people and then according to the questionnaire, they screened some people. So instead of recruiting directly people that they know, they open it and say, okay, please apply to this if you're interested. And if they feel, if they fit specific roles, specific categories, specific knowledge, then they continue, otherwise not. Hmm? So the screener can also be used for, let's say, age. Hmm? You, you are a good student, but you are interested in um, 18, 29 years old. So if you have a university student that is 30 years old, it's excluded from the test because you are not in the population that you, you want. Or for instance, they, they wanted to, a mix of different gender. Hmm? So clearly it's not a termination uh, criteria, but after you have six people that reply that are all male, you cannot pick other people that are male. You need to have other participants that are non-male because they you want a mix, that is your goal, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, what is your primary device? Computer, laptop, tablet, smartphone, and if the answer is smartphone, that are excluded from the test, because they are interested in tablet, laptop, or computers. So even if it's co college students with the right age, et cetera, et cetera, this is a criteria for excluding people from the test, because the test was about his ability on a specific things on a specific device that is not smartphone. So this is a typical, it's a questionnaire. It's just used for screening, so it's called screener. Um, then there is a script, the complete script. Hmm? Hello, my name is, I'm part of the entire story that is read by the, the tester every, every time. With notes, work on making the user feel comfortable or describe thinking aloud, also notes again as before. There is no start recording in this case, but it's more or less the same thing here. Provide the forms, consent form, questionnaire, etc. So he, again, all this information that is needed for the, the participants and then the consent form, pre-test questionnaire, that is again, uh, this, in this case is open questionnaire. Uh, the post-task questionnaire, that it's two questions, one uh, Likert scale and the other one um, open, and then the SUS scale hmm? with the same questions uh, in, in the format that is provided by SUS and uh, appendix, etc. Hmm? So this is the, just the plan of the study. Then after, they will have probably provided also the analysis. So they will take the seven, six 
uh, um, system usability scale, and they will do probably uh, an average of the results. Hmm? So one system usability scale will be, I don't know, 70, another one will be 68, another one will be 80, etc. and they will do, okay, the average system usability score is 73. Hmm? And then, because people replied in this way to the questions and the calculation is this. Hmm? So the final results, the analysis is not just the individual score, the individual results, but also putting together in a summary way the results and when you have a quantitative data, you can do an average if the type of data is appropriate for an average. So for SUS you can do, uh, for instance, it's acceptable to do uh, an average. Okay, so this is an example, it's in the document, it's for you if you want to, to look at it. It's very, very detailed. And the other links is, yes, the other links is about task, but we have spoken a lot about task. Also, uh, with Alberto, you have spoken a lot about task. Uh, but I just want to point out that maybe, let me see, that maybe you want to refine some of your task that you have. Maybe, maybe because your task is more like uh, the user goal, so browse product offering and purchase an item, visualize a piece of art, um, go choose a museum, etc. So it, there are tasks that guided you during the development, during the design of the application, but maybe for the usability task, test, you want to refine it a little bit, specify them a little bit, duplicate them a little bit to make uh, evident some differences that you want to explore in the task. Hmm? So for instance here, purchase an item is a, gener is a user goal, hmm? and a, a good task is buy a pair of shoes, a shoes for less than $40. Hmm? That is the same, let's say, task that buy some shoes, but it's more refined because it allows you to explore if people are able to select things that are less than $40. And if they're able to select shoes and not uh, t-shirt. Hmm? So it's the same, probably the application will support buying, buying uh, show, shoes, but we have filters, have options. And so if the task is buy something, they will buy something, and you will say, okay, it's working. But if you want to explore filters, if you want to explore different options, etc., you can refine or have another task that can say you say buy something as you like. It's buy these specific things with this specific feature, this specific characteristic, like it should cost less than forty dollars. Hmm? So the the participants need to make an extra effort to find where to select the less than forty dollars. Hmm? Where is the filter? There is a search for, there is a category. So it will still be the task that you already have, but it will direct the user towards one uh, way of doing the task or another way of doing the task so that you can learn also if the various options that you may have in place are working, are not working, are understandable, are not understandable, etc. Hmm? So maybe for your usability testing, once you have the final prototype, you can consider refining hmm, one or more of your three tasks also considering this way. So the task will be still the same, just more details to guide the user do something more specific. Hmm? So again, instead of saying visit a museum, whatever it is, you can say visit the Louvre. That is a specific museum. So they, they don't just need to go in the list of museum and click one of them randomly, but they also need to search for the Louvre. So they need to scroll down, to need to search, they need to order, they need to do other, uh, other um, action that is not just pick the first one in the, line, in, in the list because it was the easiest one to select. Hmm? And, and you learn if you're scrolling, if your searching mechanism are useful or not. And also will allow you to have more situated tasks. Hmm? So choose a museum, okay, and pick the cinema museum in Turin. And then if your second task is uh, look for the information for the Gioconda, well, if I choose the cinema museum, I cannot really look for the information of Joconda because it's not there. Hmm? So also my second task 
will need to change according to what I select. So either my second task is still generic or I can guide more the user and say, pick a lo the Louvre and then the second task is, okay, now that you are in the Louvre, look for the Joconda. And then now that you have in the room, that you are in the room of the Joconda, you can do this other option, this other action that is strongly related to the choice that you guide the user to do at the beginning. Hmm? So again, it's still your task. Look for a, a, um, a museum, visit a museum, uh, look for information about a piece of art, but it's directed in a way that you can also tell the story, create a scenario for them, and evaluate specific things in that, within the task, within the implementation of the task that you choose to have in the prototype, okay? So that was for telling you this. And again, you, you have covered some of these uh, in the slides. If you want, here there is uh, other suggestion for the task, uh, make task for the usability study, actionable, avoiding cleaving queue or describing the steps. So don't, you don't have to do the, the task compos the composition uh, and give them to the user because they need to understand if they need to go to the website, um, sign in or, or not, or do other action. Mm -hmm. You should give them, uh, tell me which are the results of your exam. Tell me which is the score of the web application one exam. Not to go there, click here, scroll down, look at this table, and it's the fourth line, third column, etc. This is not something that you want to do because you are not learning anything. You're just learning about the capability of the person to follow your precise instruction. That is not the goal of the usability testing. Okay, so here there are these three examples, link, uh, and knowledge. So now let's draft let's start drafting in this hour or less a simple plan <coughs> for usability testing. So instead of picking a random application that maybe not all of you know, let me pick one thing that you all know. Okay, so we are going to draft a usability testing for the Portale della Didattica, the logged in part as students, not the website. Hmm? Okay, so here there is a document that is more or less structured in the steps that we are expecting to have in the so artifact task with success criteria, methodology, if any, matrix, and also the script. Hmm? So you just have, you can also have an example of, of the entire document if you want to, to use, it, use this as a further example. So, First of all, let's choose which is the target population that we want to involve in our usability testing of the Portale della Didattica. Let's choose. I mean, you should choose which is the target population we want to involve. Students and professors. Do you agree? Yes, you agree. I think that the student and professor is too wide um, because students have their own view of the portal and professor have a totally different view. So it's not something, it will be too usability testing probably. Also the task that the professor has to do is different. So you enroll for an exam, we don't. We see the exam, or the people enrolled in an exam. We can register score, you cannot register score. You can have option in the, you can download material, we can upload material also. So it's, it's a different set of feature. So I would say one or the other. It's, there are actually two separate usability testing. One is for professor, one is for, for students. So let's say students, that's so that all of you have experienced how it works. Which students? Polytechnic students? Non-polytechnic students? We can, we can learn different things, no? With pros and cons. So which are the, the advantages and disadvantages of being, being polytechnic students doing a usability evaluation of the Portale della Didattica? I see one quite big disadvantage. If we want to learn about the usability of the system. They used to use it, 
So they know all the tricks, they know all the, okay, this is not really working, but I know how to do it anyway. Mm? So yes, I can complete the task easier because I know it, how to do it. Uh, and so they are expert in a way. So if you want to do an expert evaluation of the Portal de Adiatica, that is the way to go. Um, so disadvantage, if you want a general usability testing mm, to, to, to expert, they already have used a lot the Portale. But if you want an expert evaluation on some maybe particular task, that for sure it's a better thing. And so if we want instead not an expert evaluation, who can we recruit? Yeah. Students that are for CR Polytechnicals are just enrolled like in October, September, that's one option. So let me start writing students here because for it surely will be students or high school student, or from other university. That is way better than these other two options because it's an option, we can choose. Advantages and disadvantages. <coughs> high school student, they know probably nothing about university terminology. What is a credit? Think of yourself when you were 17 years old. Do you know what is a credit? A course that is six credit, what means? six credits. And so there is a problem with terminology. You have to explain the terminology to high school students. It's doable, but you need to explain that. A first year students has less this problem because it's maybe already uh, for maybe not September, let's say November, December, so it's already here from a couple of months, so as a little bit of exposure, so it's, it's good. From other university, which is the advantage and disadvantage of other university? They know the terminology, that is an advantage. So they are not used to the portale, but they use something else, and which is the implication of they use something else for your study. Yes, they will try to compare what they are able to do, or they will try to do things like they do in their own home university. So in any case, we are introducing some limitation, but we, we need to choose. So we can choose first year students, let's say a few, a few months, or other university students, knowing that they will have exposure to another system that will work in some case similarly to us, to ours, in other case differently. So maybe they are inclined to do things like they do in their own system, let's say Moodle. Um, so let's say you need to students, they will probably use Moodle, so they are used to, to do things like Moodle does, and here we don't have that, so some things could be slightly different. And they will try maybe to do things like, they're expecting things to work as in Moodle, but they are not, not always, not often. So which one we want to, to, to get it? Because it changed what we are going to write after, clearly. First year or other university? Which you think is, would be more interesting for this plan? So other university students. Any others? Yes, other university, okay. Age. Do we want all students? Do we care about age? Do we want master degree, bachelor degree? We don't care. PhD students. We don't care about the age. It's difficult to say that the age will be 70 years old because the population of university students that is 70 years old is small. But so we can, we can stay in a age range more appropriate for more common for university students. But we need to pick one probably, no? Master's. 
master students. Yeah, also bachelor of students use the same features, no? Why not? They don't have the thesis submission, but everything else, yeah, they don't have the thesis. Here, yes, yeah, so they don't have the thesis. So, you're making decision, and we, we, we then live with the consequence of our decision, like in many other aspects. So here is not so tremendous, but we are making decision. So, master student, you say, do you have possibility, we can have tasks with more, like the thesis, the bachelor or not, I can also say the bachelor students have less exposure of the system that they're using, and so they bring less bias, less knowledge in evaluating our portale, because they have used Moodle or whatever for less time, so they have less experience in that, so they are not trying to to find exactly what they are experienced that, so. At the university. Okay, so which year? Which couple of years? They are too different, again, for the knowledge that they have on technology on the, on the application. Yes, it's not a choice, but then you, you will need to have, let's say, you cannot have one person from the bachelor and one person from the master. You need to have like four or five person from the bachelor and four or five person from the master, because otherwise they are not balanced since they bring knowledge about the university very, very different one from the other. Not maybe very, very different, but different for sure, one from the other. So let's try to focus a little bit more. So let's say bachelor, what I'm, I'm hearing is mostly bachelor, okay? So, bachelor degree, let's put it here. And okay, age is not really the factor. Uh, just let's write, so bachelor degree, second, third year, let's write here in the age. So, um, um, so in Italian system, second and third year of bachelor degree. That should be 20, 22, more or less, hmm? years old. Okay, do we need specific expertise with something? Well, we have said, we need expertise with the university terminology. Hmm? So it should be good. It's, it's implicit, but you, you should find, so if you're doing, a, for instance, a screening um, questionnaire, you can ask, I don't know, do you know what is a credit? If the answer is no, then you, even if they are university students, you, you should exclude them. Uh, any other expertise we need? Or we want to be sure to have when recruiting people? No? No. Okay. Expertise with the uh, web. Basic. Just be able to use. Okay. Usage computer could be relevant. Yes, we want usage computer and we want desktop. Or we, do we care? I mean, like in the screener before. 
um, if they are only using a smartphone. Is it fine for us? We are going to evaluate the website of Portale della Didattica, not the mobile app, the website. Is it okay or we prefer to have people that mostly use or also use or primarily use desktop, laptop, tablets, bigger screen for how things are present in the web, in the web page? I imagine that the portal on the, on the smartphone is, I don't know if it's so responsive, but for sure it's not uh, visible like on a, smart, on a desktop computer. Yes, probably yes. It depends, actually I don't know if the portal on mobile is responsive or it's just, it's responsive. Yeah, it, it can imply different way to do things because other things are moved. So probably we want um, primarily the users of desktop, laptop, tablets. Hmm? So bigger screen. Maybe tablets not. It depends on how the portal will behave on a tablet wide screen, so horizontal. Okay. And then maybe other things that you came to your mind. Equipment. Which equipment do we need to do the test? You are asking people to come here in this room and what do you need? A computer, yes. Computer, you can specify. Then what else? A mouse. Okay, with external mouse, just in case it has a laptop. Then, do you want to record, audio record, video record, or not? So you want to a microphone, a camera, both, both. So camera in the room and microphone. And so here you list the equipment, the physical equipment you need. Hmm? Then requirements, which are the requirements you need to have to do the task, the, the test. I came to mind at least one requirement. So the portal is online, so if you just, well, you need a computer with a certain mouse and a browser and the internet. Hmm? But which are the requirements? Is there something in the portal that you need to set up specifically for the test or not? have an account. These are other people university. They don't have an account on the Portale della Didattica. So they need to have username and password, a fake account maybe, but they need to have a fake student profile, but they need to have. So it needs to be set up in that way. And so it could be your account, it could be if you're students, or you need to ask for a fake account, and then you will need some properties in this fake account according to your task that you want to do. Do you want to have, so if the tasks are about uh, let's say the, the exams, you will need to have some exams. Uh, about the courses, you will need to have some courses. If it's about the thesis, you will have to have some, some information about the thesis. So, so you need to have in the page, if you don't care about the exams, you can just skip the exam part. You have an exam table empty. Mm -hmm. So these, all of these can be done also after you define the task or in an iterative way, you don't need to do it in a linear way as we are doing, but for sure we need, uh, we need uh, set up the portale with a fake student account with something, okay? So exams, at least three exams, uh, with the score, uh, at least three courses, with materials, with video lecture, without video lectures. So the properties that you need to have everything in place to actually do the task. Otherwise, they will not be able to, to complete the task. If you have, if the task is watch a video lecture, but you don't have a course with a video lecture, 
you cannot do the task. So you need to, to set up everything so that you have all, at least all the information that you need. And artifacts, which are the artifacts we need? Well, we need for sure a consent form. Since we are video and audio recording, much more. Uh, so in a form, consent form, then what we may need as artifacts, as piece of paper, let's say. Do we want to have a pretest questionnaire? or not? We need, okay, we want to have a post-test questionnaire. And here we can say, okay, it's a, my custom questionnaire, it's SUS, is NASA, TLX, is whatever, but we can also create it. So we can, do you want to choose one that exists or not? Yes, and what we are going to use? The source, okay. Hmm? So going through these, we, okay, do we have the constant form? Yes, do we have the questionnaire? Yes. Do we want to have a post-task questionnaire? Hmm? Yes, no, maybe. A pretest questionnaire. These are the kind of decisions you have to take. Because you're collecting information from that and you hopefully learn something from that. So in a post-test questionnaire, you are SUS, but maybe in a pretest questionnaire, you can ask the experience with other system or which is the system that they are using on their university. Maybe you discover that all the users that, that have Moodle do something in a certain way or have problem with a certain task, but others don't. So that could be uh, something that has related to the experience that they have with Moodle as a system. So you maybe these are information you want to, to understand, you want to discover. You want to keep track if it's male, female, or other genders, if you want to keep track of the age, the bachelor degrees, if it's philo philosophy, if it's computer science, if it's mathematics, if it is literature, if it is medicine, maybe you want to keep track of this information. So in a pre-test questionnaire. So if you decide to have that, you can add as an artifact pre-test questionnaire. Hmm? If you don't, just, and then you have to prepare this questionnaire in a suitable number of copy for everybody, print them out, put them in a Google form, if it's doing online, etc. And then we also need to decide if it's doing online or not. So if it's in person, you will have for sure a camera. So in this moment it's in person because you have camera and microphone. If it's online, you will have a Zoom account or WebEx or whatever system you want to use for screen recording, audio recording, etc. the session. Hmm? And how to fill out the consent form. It will be a Google form. We then need to, to fill out or some kind of form. If it's on paper, they need to sign up in that moment. So this is for an in-person, but if it's not in-person, this equipment will change. You will not have a camera with an external mouse because you're using the laptop or the computer that is, or the computer that the person is connected with. And you share the screen, for instance, or you, yes, you share the screen, or they share the screen with you. It depends how you want to set up this. And how do you want to set up this is something that you can explain in the script. Okay, so let's imagine a couple of tasks just to make some example. Okay, something simpler. <laughs> then create a study plan. Hmm? Book an exam? Okay. Let's make it, as, as I said before, more concrete. More concrete. Which exam? Yeah. For HCI. So here we are giving the possibility of the user to choose which one, which, which seat. So the first seat or the second seat, if we are in this period, right? 
because we, they can choose. It's the first seat, the second seat. Hmm? So if it's something good for us, it's fine. If it's not, we can specify book an exam in January. Book the first available exam for human computer interaction. Hmm? Because here it's book one. Pick one randomly, you don't care. If it's just the first that you have seen, you didn't even notice that there are two, you just put one. Hmm? It's, it's something that you discover, as we were saying before, the task is important, you can have details. So you, if you say book the second exam, they need to look that there are more than one. And they have to understand that there are the second is, is after the first one, and so they have to choose the right date. So the date information becomes important in completing the task. Here, in this case, you don't care about the date. It's just one random exam. So if you have see 11 exams, if you, if you see all the exams until September, in this case, it's one randomly. It could be also the September one, or the first in the list. So this is a choice. So this is concrete, can be more concrete saying book the first available exam for human computer interaction. So if they book the second one, it's a mistake because you won the first one. Hmm? So which is the success criteria for this? When you can say that the task is fully successful, Mm. Yeah, the, um, let's say the, the, the receipt, the exam receipt, let's call it in the way, uh, shows that the HCI exam of January 2023 is booked. Mm. So this is the success criteria. What happens if they book the February exam? It's clearly not 100% completed because the first available, so February is not the first available. Is it okay for us? Like saying, okay, this is 80% completed, partially completed, it's a minor error, it's a major error, or no, absolutely, since you booked the, uh, the second seat is, is not completed. This is a choice we need to make, you need to make. Again, pros and cons for both alternatives. Hmm? So we can say that this is a success criteria for 100%, and we can say we accept as a penalty, with a penalty, uh, the selection of the second available exam. We can say that. And clearly, if all the people we select the human group interaction, but not the first available seat, that is a huge usability problem we, we already identified, even if the task is partially complete. Hmm? But it depends, again, what we want to, 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 to explore more in our application. It's more important that they're able to book an exam, or more important that they book an exam in a specific date, or both. If they're both important, then we can say that the success criteria is just that. Hmm? That you have to do the first seat. So if you select human group interaction, second seat, task not completed. If you select computer architecture, task not completed because it's not human group interaction. Hmm? Where is the level? It's up to you to decide and then apply consist consistently across all the tasks. Hmm? So you can say that this is uh, one or zero completed or not completed, you can say that this is 100% and another date is 50% completion. Another exam is zero. Not be able to book an exam is zero. So a set of criteria that apply consistently along the various tasks. Uh, do we want to apply some methodology? Uh, nothing. Think, uh, collaborative thinking, uh, think aloud. Nothing. Okay, let's do another task. 
that can be connected or not with the first one. Hmm? So the first one, if we give them in order, in this order, and then you need to, not to give them in order, but to, to shuffle, uh, to avoid hmm, the learning from one task to the other, you are, you were in the home page probably, you book the exam, you get the receipt, and you got, got back in the home page automatically, right? I don't know. After you book an exam? The home page, okay. In the end, you can, you can be sure that the user is in the home page. So you're back in the home page. Second task, and then we will stop after the second task. Not about the exam. Let's do a task, another, another task. which could be another common task, let's say, that you, you do with the portal. Download the, the last available slide for the human computer interaction, the computer architecture course. The, no, which is another course you have now, not the computer architecture. This is second year. Uh, there is, well, let's say in computer architecture, doesn't matter. Or, well, let's play safe. Well, I don't know if it's play safe because you cannot do this, all, this, this task but, uh, on the portal, but let's say that is possible uh, for whatever reason. In this fake account, it's possible. So, which is the success criteria? Again, as before, the PDF of the material is uh, on, on the computer, uh, and again, you can choose if it's one or zero, so if I don't select the last available, but one of, it's acceptable or not. Well, in my experience in the portal, it probably is acceptable because it's not easy to get the last one, isn't it? To identify which is the last one in the interface. So probably, in this case, you, you already know that there is probably a problem there, and so you, or either is not the last available, mm, it could be download the introductory slides. Mm. So that is not time bound, it could be time bound, but it's not time bound, it's topic bound. So you have to identify which are the introductory one and download them. So maybe you try, you se select multiple, you download multiple things and then also the right one. And so again, it's a choice. It's how many attempts people does. Mm? It's something that you can keep track mm? to complete a task. And here, well, this is it. And methodology could be, for instance, think aloud. Mm? So that the person say, okay, now I'm going to the human computer page and then I click on material and then I click on whatever there is to click, and then I click on, double click on the folder that is called slide, let's imagine that is this way, and then I see all the slides, and then I'm looking for something that say introduction, and I don't load this, or no, this is not introduction, uh, but okay, these are, these are the other ones, these are the introduction ones, so think aloud. Hmm? Explain the, the method. And here you can also have metrics. Hmm? So you can have, for instance, time on task, so how long a task uh, needed as time. That is an absolutely useless measure for task two, since we have think aloud, so we are changing the time because people are speaking, but for task one is fine. Uh, we can have the number of attempts. Hmm? So it's everything's done first trial or multiple trial to do a task. And why? That could be an indication of the difficulty or something we can ask in a debriefing session if we want to have a debriefing session. And w what we can have. Um, what we can have also. Number of attempts slash errors, depends how you see that. What we can have. Number of clicks. And in that case, we need to, in that case, we need to equip 
uh, add the capability to save num clicks, number, and location. If you want to store number of clicks, you want to have the system doing, not you can't, you guys clicking one, two, three, but don't maybe after the test is completed, download a file and say, okay, these are the buttons that were clicked, the link that were clicked with maybe a timestamp, a timestamp, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you want the system to do that. Mm -hmm. So you see, uh, as soon as you change, add things, you can go up and add other, other requirements, other things you need to set up for, for this. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we will have matrix, well, the SAS, well, we, we will have also the, the, the score of the source, but, and for all these metrics, if you, after you run the test, if you say that these are the metrics, after you run the test and analyze the result, you should say that task number one took, on average, three seconds. And three seconds is good, bad, because. And task number three is the one that get the maximum number of attempts with the people doing on average 10 attempts before doing it right. Because. So that is the summary, the anal analysis of the results. And all the metrics should be analyzed because you collect all the, these metrics for, for a reason. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing usability tests, if you write some metrics and you don't report the results of these metrics, it's an error, there is a mismatch. If you say there is three metrics, there will be the results of these three metrics after. And then you can also set up the script. Here there is some, um, some hints, and then here there is a pretest questionnaire. I don't know if we added the pretest questionnaire. Yes, we added. And if you don't have the pretest questionnaire, you just remove handle. And here there is a task zero that is a look at explore the website for three minutes. It's not mandatory. It's just an example. But this is an example of a possible script for the website with notes like start the recording because you need to remember to start the recording uh, every time, whatever it happens in the room in that moment, etc. Uh, also here you need, uh, if you want, you need uh, before participants, you can also need uh, roles. Mm. So uh, name will be the tester, other name, and other name uh, will be the observer, etc. cetera. Mm? So you need your roles. Mm? So if the usability testing is about a high fidelity prototyping code, you just need probably observer, tester, not a lot of other things. If it's a usability testing on a paper prototype, this is not our case, but it's possible to do usability testing on a paper prototype, you will also have a computer role. This is the person moving the pieces of paper around. So according to which kind of prototype you're using, you have different roles in place that can play a role. And so here, it's probably easier because you have, uh, in your stage, it's probably easier because you have a software application that is already doing and you keep them as needed for the usability testing. Okay? Any question? Okay, so this document is already linked on the website. This is, um, well, something that you can use for your usability testing. Uh, we will have um, other, well, for sure, one lab in January and other three lectures. Uh, one will be a seminar from a company in Turin. Uh, we need to define if it will be Monday or Tuesday. Um, the last lecture will be on Wednesday, will be question and answer about the final report, about the exam, so if you have any questions, any doubt for that, we will dedicate one hour, one hour and a half, whatever, for answering questions, maybe presenting, solving any doubts about the final report that will be, whose templates or instruction will be out soon, but uh, that we will use that for discussing about that. And the first one, the other lecture, um, I don't yet know uh, which is the topic of the other lecture. We will not introduce any other new content, uh, so maybe we will 
uh, transform that lecture in a lab, we will see in a physical lab in rooms with the three slots in parallel mm, so that you don't have to, 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 to change anything in the, if it's more useful because you can work on the usability testing, you can work on your prototype. So we, we will see according to where the, the seminar will go and according to the availability of the rooms uh, in Polytechnico because we, need, we will need three rooms in one uh, time slot and it's not, not always is possible according to the availability of the rooms. So, but we will see. But this is really the last conceptual topic that we are going to, 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 to face during the course so that everything else from now on is just about your project, about your preparation for the exam with our support and, and that's it. Okay, so if you have any questions, I'm still here for five, 10 minutes. Otherwise, have happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. And we will see you in January.